Good morning. Just managing a couple baskets of harvest that have been sitting on the dining room table for a day or so to put up and process onions need to cure. And I thought while I do this chore, maybe I'll share with you some things that I'm doing while I'm doing it, but really the intent of this video, one, two, three, four, um, is to talk about, Rachel, you keep mentioning you're taking the seventh year off. Can you tell us why or what that's about? And I, I honestly don't know if I know all the answers, but I will just tell you why I'm doing it. <laughs> so oddly enough, what you might not know is long ago, a couple years ago, I was actually researching and studying what the Bible had to say about what I do, gardening. What does God say? Surely there's lots of wisdom in the Bible about being a good land steward, about farming, about taking care of animals. You know, it's one of the primary occupations back in the day. Um, and researched a lot and I have somewhere big long Com compilation of notes that I actually thought at some point in time I might put together as like a devotional or a book. Um, just like how it's such a communion time with me with my Lord when I'm gardening, when I'm taking care of things. He shows himself to me over and over again how great he is <laughs> when um, I'm living this life and it's just such a beautiful thing. And in that, I was uh, made more aware, as you often are as you go through seasons in your life, of how uh, one of the Torah commandments um, to the Israelites was, and I'm not super, super, um, like I'm no theologian, so I'm not super, super um, studied in the Bible, but I think I know it decently well. Um, was one of the Torah commandments was to um, give the land a Sabbath. Like we take a Sabbath once a week, the land gets a Sabbath rest um, once every seven years. And, um, but in the Torah commandments, if, the, if they didn't do that, they would um, be subject to pestilence and disease and famine. And, you know, there was um, God's strict ruling um, to try to keep people from sin, there was punishment, right? And now, of course, we know as Christians, the punishment is ultimately separation, um, separation from God um, outside of knowing his son as our Lord and Savior. So anyway, that being said, I know there's lots of probably theological debates on whether or not Jesus truly canceled out all the laws, it fulfilled the laws, what does that mean? Um, I believe that there's a truth to that. Um, I'm not gonna get into that conversation, but I believe in my personal pers um, understanding of the Bible that um, God's law still holds a lot of truth and a lot of wisdom um, for us to follow. Now, do I believe that God's Punishment is still there, um, not necessarily because I believe Jesus brought grace. And um, so anyway, I'm not necessarily doing it in the idea of it's a law. What I found when I studied that more and more um, and read a lot of just, um, you know, studies from different um, Bible scholars it was really about um, keeping greed, keeping greed out of the hearts of the landowners. Um, and he, in that same Leviticus scripture is a lot of, um, a lot of commentary about how debt, land debts were freed up at that given time, uh, debts were canceled. You know, what was rightfully somebody's was returned to them. Um, so it's a lot of really, uh, you can see God's grace. You can see God's compassion and mercy in that law. 
And I think it's really neat to, um, there's also a parallel that comes out of that in the New Testament in Romans. And I'll put some of the scripture references down below um, where he talks about, uh, I believe it's Paul writing Romans, talks about the land is groaning and can't wait for a rest from the people because the land was never created for us. It was created for the maker's will, right? And we are often not good stewards of what God has given us. Um, and it can't wait. And it goes on to talk about how the land can't wait for the people to be fulfilled, returned, um, so that it can have <laughs> its rest. And I thought that that was just precious. Like we are working this sweet earth, the sweet land that God gave us, and sometimes often taking it so for granted that um, it needs it needs its rest so it can continue to do what God created it to do for his creation, which is feed the insects and the animals and its people. Um, so that is why I have chosen to give my land a rest. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to what it does, what it means, you know, what I learned from that late year of rest. Um, I think it's going to not only renew my garden space, but also my spirit as a farmer and tender of the land. So I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but let me finish wrapping up these onions. The aromas and San Marzano is really starting to come in now, so I am just um, popping the tops off and bagging them up till I have plenty to harvest. If they're not quite ripe, like this one, for example, has green on it, I'm just leaving them out, and as they ripen, I'll throw them in the freezer bags. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, so more, um, so what am I gonna do? I know that's a lot of questions that you might have in your mind. What are you gonna do that seventh year, either personally or um, as uh, for your garden, anything? Well, this, I'm in my fifth year right now. Something that God commits to um, the Israelites is that he will bless the harvest the sixth year. Um, and that it will be two to three times what they plan on and, you know, on a typical year so that they don't have to worry about having enough food to survive on. Um, so I'm just taking that with a New Testament interpretation, right? And I'm uh, being a very good steward of what God gives me this fifth and sixth year, um, putting up as much as I can um, so that I uh, have as little impact. And that's just being a good steward of your harvest. I'm uh, being more intentional about what I'm planting. Um, and then that seventh year, or the coming out of the sixth year, I plan on planting a cover crop um, so that the land can start, heal, you know, do a true healing through that, um, be protected. Uh, very well and as you know in any garden there's always the volunteers right which is so fun and I keep that's what I keep mentioning in my garden I can't wait to see what it looks like that seventh year um, so I'd imagine there's going to be plenty of volunteering going on um, and the Bible uh, does state that you can harvest from that you the the landowner himself um, should give away the majority of it, um, and then you can consume whatever your household would like to eat fresh, you know, not necessarily to preserve, but, and I'm taking li very liberal interpretation of what my understanding is, but the, the primary intent is to let the poor, let the hungry um, come in harvest from whatever the fields provide. So, I haven't quite um, done enough research and um, taken it a step further to say 
in that seventh year, what does it say about land rest with respect to outside of crops? with respect to like rotational grazing of my chickens, raising pigs, things like that. So we will be raising pigs next year, our seventh year. Um, we'll easily, or our sixth year, we'll easily be able to take the seventh year off then. So there's been a lot of planning going into preparing to take that seventh year off. And um, I'm, I think I'm looking forward to uh, the excitement of the yield that still comes from the land as it's resting and as God is seeking to still fulfill my heart's joy, which is I love giving away. I love giving all my extras as much as I can from my harvest to my family. And um, so, yeah, that's what the seventh year, it's called Schmitta, I believe, if I pronounce that correctly in the Jewish faith um, and then the Bible also if you're interested to research it talks about the Jubilee year which is the seventh seventh year celebration which happens every 50 years or so um, and I believe 2021 is um, the Jubilee year and uh, so exciting things to research and study um, Definitely, I would never judge anyone that is a New Testament Christian, you know, a gospel believer Christian to, um, like, that doesn't apply to you. That's per perfectly fine, and I understand that. It is Torah law, and I'm not saying it applies, um, but I think that there's wisdom in it, is all I'm saying. And um, so I'm choosing to, excited to see what the... Um, what God blesses me through it and um, what I learn. I plan on hopefully by then having a couple grandkids, at least one, I know one's on the way. And um, getting to spend a lot of time visiting with grandbabies. Um, that seventh year we have a, a marriage happening here on the farm. So another son and future daughter-in-law are getting married. So there'll be lots of farm wedding preparations to happen that um, not gardening will um, allow us time for. And uh, so there'll be plenty to do, maybe traveling, maybe more fishing on the boat. Um, so we'll still be here. There'll be lots going on. And if anything, we will bring you all the, the ways that we're making our harvest last and how we're using it. Look at that beautiful bag of tomatoes. Um, from those, those this fifth and uh, fifth and sixth year harvest coming up. So hopefully that answers your questions. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them down in the um, comment section below. I'll do my best to answer it for you. I'm fortunate enough that two of my brother-in-laws are ministers. My son is starting seminary in the fall, so I have lots of resources at it at my disposal to ask questions. Um, so feel free to leave your questions, comments below, and I'll be sure to answer to you. And if you're not a believer, you're not a Christian, and you're interested in what and who Jesus is, I'd encourage you to just pick up the Bible, um, talk to a friend, somebody that you know, and uh, I pray that the truth is revealed to you. Thanks guys, love you. Talk to you soon.